What's going on, everyone? So in a surprise move last Monday, the Memphis Grizzlies ended up waving Kenny Lofton Jr., which was very surprising to Memphis fans. It was very surprising to a lot of the players in Memphis, and it was something that they had to do in order for Ja Morant to return. Uh, so that way they had the 15-man roster uh, following today's game in which Ja Morant played. And this is a kid that had a lot of promise. He went undrafted in the 2022 NBA draft, um, but Memphis grabbed him and he immediately showed that like, oh, this kid has some potential. He's 21 years old, so he still has plenty of upside, plenty of just, I mean, he's very talented and has a real skill set that could only improve and get better with the right organization, with the right development, uh, with the right structure. You know, he's like a 6'7", a 270-pound guy, which teams have had questions and concerns about just his his weight uh, for a guy that's 6'7". He's kind of, he's not really a center, but with his size and his weight, he can play center. He's more of a power forward, but he rebounds the basketball very well. He's had some monster games also for the uh, 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 Memphis Grizzlies, right? This is a guy that had like a, like a, what, a 45 and 20 game or a 45 and 15 game, something like that. Uh, but he hasn't really gotten much opportunity. He hasn't gotten much of a role uh, for the Memphis Grizzlies this year. Uh, he's averaging 2.6 points one rebound, and an assist on 37.8%. But like I mentioned, it's a very limited role. He's not a guy that's been a, a huge key part of the rotation. And Memphis is kind of in this weird spot where they're trying to contend, but there's questions of like, can he? Can they really contend? And he just kind of became the odd man out. I don't think it's because they wanted to get rid of him. I think that they really liked him. They were very high on him. But you, you had to get rid of somebody, and it's like, well, we're, we're not a team trying to build for the next like five years. We're a team that's trying to win now. Uh, so last year, he played in 24 games. Uh, he shot 52.7% from the field and 35% from three in his rookie year. Uh, he averaged five points. Again, nothing crazy, um, but he also only averaged seven minutes per game. So he's given you almost a point a minute last season. This year, um, 15 games, six minutes per game average and he gave you 2.6 points so again I mean he's averaging basically a point every two minutes um so this is a guy that would be long term as far as like a development guy he's a guy that a team and an organization would bring in you know you've seen the upside you've seen him go and get a it was a 42 point game he had his career high 42 points got 14 rebounds Right, he's a guy that can dish the ball a little bit. He's stout, he's sturdy, good lower center of gravity. Maybe you want to cut a little bit of weight on him, but if it's not something that like affects his mobility, maybe you keep that and just kind of have him as like a small ball center that can just position himself, right? It could in the right situation be great for Kenny Lofton as well as that organization. And the question I want to pose today cuz this is a Lakers channel is should the Lakers bring him in? and give him a shot. Sign him to a non-guaranteed deal. I don't think that they necessarily would do it right now, right? Cuz you're not going to you're not going to waste your 15th roster spot on Kenny Lofton Jr., especially a project, but post trade deadline, if you know, you made some trades and say now you have like, you know, 14 guys on the roster. Well, why not bring in Kenny Lofton and have him be kind of a project guy, a guy that you can work with, a guy that can play the 4, he can play the 5, spread the floor a little bit. Right, I think that he could be a he would be a nice sort of asset to add to our pool of youthful players that you could kind of you know give it a year or two and see where he goes, see if he's somebody that can be impactful, right? See if he could be somebody that can you know just cause some havoc at some point. He's also another big body that you could throw at Jokic that has good size, good strength good just weight behind him. Again, no one's expecting Kenny Lofton Jr. to slow down or stop Jokic, but as I've mentioned in the past, it's not about that. It's about wearing him down over the course of a season, right? So like, let's say, argument's sake, say the Lakers trade for Zach Levine and Andre Drummond, right? And they give up like three or four players. Now you have, let's say, like 14 guys on your roster or whatever, and you bring in Kenny Lofton. So now you got like, let's say, you know, Jackson Hayes, Andre Drummond, Anthony Davis, you got Christian Wood. It wouldn't it wouldn't hurt to have a guy like Kenny Lofton, who again, like you're not playing him 20 minutes, but 
you're just kind of putting them out there and going like, hey, give some good, clean, just play off fouls, be physical, be aggressive. You know, if you foul out quickly, it's fine. And you just kind of use him as a body to wear him down. Like, it's one of the things that the Lakers did in the 2020 season. How the Lakers were able to kind of slow down Jokic and kind of wore him out. Now, it's a very different Jokic. Don't get me wrong. He's lost weight. You know, he's more skilled, more talented now than he was back then. But still, it is still a good idea where it's like a seven-game series. Jokic is only one guy. And if you have four, five, six guys that you could throw at him, I don't think that that would hurt. Um, I do. I like the idea of Kenny Lofton coming in. The Lakers were interested in him. The Lakers actually worked him out in the in the draft, and uh, he was one of the the big focal points of the draft in which they worked out. And uh, so they had at least some level of interest. Ultimately, he ended up going to the Memphis Grizzlies. But if you know the Lakers now have an opportunity to sign him, have an, an opportunity to get him, why not? Why not bring him in? Right again. I don't necessarily think that they would do it right now just because do you really want to fill that 15th roster spot with Kenny Lofton? And then on top of that, like what happens if you don't do a trade now you're locked in or you have to wave them again, right? I just, I think you're better off just being patient. You know, I would at least, you know, make contact and be like, Hey, you know, stay ready, continue conditioning, stay in as best shape as possible we got to work some stuff out. And once we work some stuff out, then we'll look to, to maybe bring you in once everything's done. Now, of course, you run the risk of him ending up going to another team. And if that happens, that's something that you just live with. But like if he's available, you know, in a month after, you know, the trade deadline or a month and a half, whatever, after the trade deadline, I don't hate the idea of bringing him in as just like a roster filler. Because once you get to the playoffs, I said you're only going to run eight, maybe nine guys total, which you'll have that even if you do a Zach Levine trade or anything. So my th- thinking is like, you know, you bring him in as like an end of the bench guy that you can put in in spots, um, you know, has some familiarity, especially, you know, has some good size that you can put up against some of these other guys, right? If you end up with like, I don't know, a warrior matchup or something, you can put him out there in little spots as like a small ball center to match up, especially if you end up trading like Rui, and, you know, maybe you do unload a, a Jackson Hayes in the deal, right? And it's like, okay, well, let's go get a – we got Andre Drummond. You know, maybe we got Christian Wood. It wouldn't hurt to bring in a Kenny Lofton and just kind of have a sizable guy. Like, you could do worse than that, right? Gives you some youth. Gives you somebody that can fill in in just, like, little small spots. Even if he doesn't play, you're just carrying him over in the next season. It's another guy on your roster. Again, that could be a development guy. It doesn't hurt to have these young, talented players. Right, you get these guys, especially a guy like Kenny Lofton, who has shown some nice versatility, has shown the ability to shoot the three ball, has shown the ability to knock down the mid range, to rebound the basketball well. Right, like if given the opportunity, it, it doesn't hurt to have too many sort of farm guys. Right, you think of like Demoy Hodge, Alex Fudge, you know, Colin Castleton. No, you got Lewis and you got Christie and you got Shafino. You know, and you got these young guys, right? Like, it doesn't hurt to have this pool of just young 19 to mid 20 year old guys that can come in, have an impact, play a role, right? Develop under the Lakers brand, under the Lakers banner, and then maybe potentially end up being a, a part of the organization, especially like also, too, if you get Kenny Lofton, like, let's say the Lakers do bring up like a Demoy Hodge. Or they do bring up a um, like Colin Castleton next season, then if you have Kenny Lofton, like you sign him to the rest of the year, you could then sign him to a two way deal, and he could fill in for a Colin Castleton or Demoy Hodge, and then you could have him kind of develop under the banner, and then also develop with the Lakers and the team and the organization. I don't hate the idea. Again, it's not some like big impact move. It's not something that like, oh, like we got Kenny Lofton, it's over. But I do think he's a guy that could could make a lot of sense for the Lakers for now in the long term, right? Um, again, to me, it depends on like how things shape up. Like I wouldn't just go sign him right now with the 15th roster spot. But if you have something that makes sense as we move closer, um, then yeah, sure. But anyway, again, I have a feel whatever your thoughts are. I'd love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. 
Uh, that being said, that being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me out a lot. Let's me know enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.